Good morning and welcome to your walkthrough of your 2024 Ventana floor plan 4037. If you come up to the front here, we'll start at the cockpit on the driver's side with the leveling system. The leveling system is an equalizer. Um, before you uh, put the jacks down and or auto level, you want to make sure the coach is at ride height. So as long as you've come to your destination and your coach is still on the airbags, then you would run the slide rooms out and then you would want to level. So you're ready to level, slide rooms are out, you're on uh, the air ride bags, then you would want to turn the ignition on. All right, so with our ignition turned on, we turn our power button on and our LED shows that our ignition is on to give the pump power. Once we click on auto level, you can see it's in operating mode and you can hear the pump running and the jacks are being pushed down. So as the jacks go, uh, go down to the ground, then the coach is going to uh, come up and it will auto level. If for any reason we're too far off of level that the jacks could not auto level, then you would see the LED light for excessive slope come on. But we're in an area right now where it's level enough that should not happen. You can see the coach moving slightly as the jacks are touching the ground and it's starting to level. Okay, so now it's just making those final adjustments to our level. And when the coach is level to where it was set, then the operating light LED goes out. And you can see here where our ignition uh, can uh, be turned off now. And then we just hit our power button off because we're level. And that's how you level the coach. And you just go in reverse of that uh, to retract the jacks. Um, but what you'd want to do is be on air ride first. So you'd want to air the coach up and then retract the jacks. And then run the slide rooms in. Uh, so just in the reverse order is what you put them down. If you look in front of our equalizer leveling system, you'll see that we have our tag dump auto and disable and manual. Uh, what that does is the tag axle um, can be uh, dumped or released so that it's easier to back the coach into a tight uh, turn radius. Um, in front of that, we have the ATC override. Just below that, we have our engine brake on and off. Uh, if we turn our engine brake on, then we can use the engine brake high, medium, and low. So the engine uh, can be set for the braking to be a low, medium, or high. If this is off, then you don't have those settings available. This has to be on for the engine brake to be set to low, medium, or high. The switch in front of that, the rocker switch is the air horn. As long as the coach is aired up and you have the engine air in the system, the air horn will work. Uh, if it's turned off, then the, the horn for the street horn will work. If it's turned on, then you'll have the air horn if there's air in the system. This is a battery boost switch. If you would get into the coach and for some reason uh, the coach wouldn't start, you can connect the starting or chassis batteries with the house batteries by pressing this button down and holding it for 60 seconds. After that, you would turn the ignition on 
and there's enough battery boost there typically would be enough battery boost from the house batteries to the chassis batteries to help you start the engine just in front of this assembly you have your allison transmission control this obviously is going to put you in gear whether that's in drive neutral or reverse whenever you come to a stop with the coach you always put the uh, shift position in neutral and then you would set the park brake which is here so <clears throat> whenever the coach is parked the transmission is in N or neutral and the yellow lever is pulled back towards you to set the parking brake to drive the coach the engine would be started the coach would air up and then you would put it in drive uh, and the gear indicator would be here now once the transmission warms up you can refer to your owner's manual you can go in and look at the modes and um, oil levels here in front of that we have the dash cluster here at the front uh, at the top we have our lights if we have the key engaged uh, to accessories you can see uh, our lights will come on for light uh, marker or off um, we have uh, the dimmer switch you can see if I hold the dimmer switch down uh, the lights will dim this switch in the center is uh, for your fog lights if this is on then uh, when you would use the dimmer switch uh, then the fog lights would come on uh, if that's off then your fog lights won't work and you're just going to have uh, the dimmer switch here um, to go to your uh, bright headlights or dim headlights there is an additional switch here for a dome light so you can turn your dome light on here if you want uh, the lights the headlights to dim automatically uh, you can turn the auto high beams uh, to auto and then they'll dim automatically while you're driving just below that we have the heated mirror switch if the ignition is on and you need to turn the heaters on the mirrors to defrost or get rid of any moisture on the mirror uh, that's what this button is for when it's lit up red then the heat uh, pad behind the mirror comes on and it will melt the frost to adjust the mirrors left and right the driver's side you would go to the left and then you would just press here for left and right up and down the center position is neutral and then we go to the right now we can adjust the passenger side mirror here the same way when you're done adjusting the mirrors just put this back in the center uh, in case someone would touch those then it's not going to move the mirrors away from where you had them set if it's not uh, if the mirrors aren't fogged up or frosted then you can just leave this off you don't need the heated mirror pad to be on just below that we have the charging station to set your phone here and the phone will charge um, from this location to the right of that we have our uh, mid dash heat and air conditioning vents uh, they can be opened or closed uh, in the center you have your main instrument cluster um, just starting from the top left you've got fuel uh, engine temp oil pressure uh, you've got your airbags uh, for front and rear and then you've got your DEF tank and um, that's empty or full uh, you've got your RPM indicator here in the center uh, you've got your selection uh, for uh, what you might want to view or adjust here on your dash cluster and then you've got over here your uh, miles per hour so now we can take a little closer look at these in one second first we'll start at the wheel uh, we've got three instrument clusters here the first one on the left is going to control your wipers and your telephone. 
So if you need to make a hands-free call, uh, you would press the green button. When you're done with the call, you would press the red telephone to hang up. Uh, this is your wiper wash solution. And this is your wiper uh, intermittent button, and this turns it on high or low. So once we turn our wipers on, we can select the amount of time that goes by before it would be intermittent. So however long you wait within 30 seconds, if you press that at 15 seconds, that's how long the delay would be. Moving down here to the center cluster, this would operate the uh, radio core source. You can choose here um, for your radio. Um, if, we, if we go here to source and we have it on radio, we can select whether uh, you want radio, media center, Sirius XM, Bluetooth, HDMI, or auxiliary right here. Our camera control, we can select that um, just by the press of a button. We don't have to select it over here. We can do it right from the uh, wheel. Um, the volume controls are here. If we've selected something but want to go back, we can just hit the back arrow and go back uh, or forward. If we want to hit mute or silence, just pressing the center button will mute uh, the speakers uh, for whatever source we have tuned in. Then to the right, the cluster on the right side here, we have uh, two controls. If you notice here, if I press this control down, the pedals are moving forward and back. You can adjust those pedals before you take your trip. Um, if you look here at the top lever, there is an indicator here that's moving up and down. And this is the electric steer assist. So as you're driving, if you want a more firm or uh, a less firm, a, a more power steering, you can adjust this up or down to the level you like. I like it right there in the mid-range myself. If you press the home screen here, it will go to this uh, view. And then as you scroll up or down arrows here, uh, you can select which one of these you want to, to adjust or view. Settings, messages, brightness. Uh, and then once you select that uh, and you make your adjustment, press OK to adjust, so you just go up or down, and then once uh, you have it set, then just press OK. Go back to the home. You can do the same thing for trip, uh, engine load percentages, and um, the screen on the bottom is the tire pressure monitor system, TPMS. So this screen is important to view and make sure that all of your tire pressures are in the green. If the tire pressure gets too low or too high, then the tire will show red. And if it, if it has any one of those tires in the red, then you'd want to uh, make an adjustment on the air pressure of that tire. And that pretty much covers the instrument cluster here. The turn signal um, is for setting the cruise control and or turn signals. When I set the turn signal to the left and then I, I'm in my camera view, so here you can see the camera view switches uh, when I turn my right signal versus my left signal it gives me the left view camera. The left and right cameras are separate from the 360 view. If I turn my turn signals off, we'll get to the cameras in a minute, but setting the cruise is just a matter of turning the cruise on. You set it to the on position and then you press this uh, center button in to set your cruise. Um, if you want to turn the cruise off, just press it to the left. Um, that will turn it off. If you depress the brake pedal while it's in set on cruise, uh, it automatically turns it off as well. 
So moving over here uh, to the center uh, cluster, um, you'll notice on the top of the dash, just in case you need to service either one of these instrument clusters or radio cameras or cores, uh, there's a Velcro cover uh, on that. We can lift that up and remove those. And then they just go back down in place with the Velcro. Um, but if you look here on the menu for your radio core, uh, we can choose uh, just by the touch uh, of our finger what we want to view on the menu, whether that's Bluetooth. We have no connection now. Uh, navigation. If you go to the navigation mode, you have to hit accept. And then you can set your own uh, route. Uh, choose a, a route. You can type it in. Uh, if you have uh, a new route that you want to plot, you just press new route and then address, you can put the address that you want to take um, or just go directly to the nav button. The other selections include HDMI, auxiliary, mobile eye. The mobile eye here is a uh, lane mitigation. Lane mitigation uh, camera is located up in the front uh, right here. You can see that's our mobile eye. That helps guide us and tells us when we're in the right uh, lane and gives us warnings for uh, lane mitigation. Uh, we have, uh, back to our camera control, we have the 360. Once you choose the 360, uh, you can go left, right, or rear just by touching. Or if you don't wanna touch the screen, you can just select uh, the 360 view here there's your 360 view. Once you select that, you can toggle to each of those 360 views, uh, which are top and left, top and right, top front, and rear focus, front focus. So just pressing this will scroll to all of the 360 uh, views that are available. Um, there is a dim button here. We can dim it. Uh, we could go to our favorites. Um, if you want to use the mic uh, to talk, you just press this button here if you were connected to Bluetooth. There is a gear icon uh, for settings. Uh, you can go in and you can change your settings if you need to. Um, there is a small icon in the top corner that tells you if there's another page that's not in view. So if you see uh, one of two, you're on the first page. Uh, some some of the settings have two pages, so just be aware of that. There is a mode at the very bottom here. You see house mode. So if I'm outside, but I'm playing the radio or my Bluetooth, and I want to hear what's playing inside, then I could choose house mode, and then what I'm hearing on the radio here will play on the outside entertainment center. To connect my phone, for instance, to Bluetooth, I press uh, a device that I have paired. Uh, you can see that nothing's been paired because this is a new radio. There is a power button. There, uh, We can turn it off if we want the screen to be off. The There is uh, up and down arrows here uh, for dimming, brightness, and then you can set it, contrast, you can Go through and set those to turn off our main core radio core. Just press this button that turns this one off, and then you just have the splash screen left over. Uh, below our radio core and our camera, uh, we've got our visor and shade control. Uh, the shade is just like a screen uh, to provide shade. The visor is this uh, black cover. Uh, to move that up and down, <clears throat> we have just a touch of a button here. If we move both, I could just press them both at the same time. There is a safety feature built in so that even if these are pressed in the down position, they'll only, if I don't have the engine ignition, if I have the engine ignition on like it is now, 
it won't come down any further than halfway. If I have the ignition off, I had my headlights on, that's what you heard beeping. If I have the ignition off or the keys out, you, you won't be able, you will be able to put the shades down, but if the ignition's on, that's when you can't lower the shades. So if I turn the key on to the ignition or have the engine running, you'll notice that the shade and visor will not come down. They will go up. Once the engine's off, then I will be able to put my shades back down. Just beside that, I've got the overhead fans. The key has to be engaged for the overhead fans to come on. That helps defrost the windshield and move air in the cockpit. Once the overhead fans are on, I can turn it to high, medium, or low. Uh, the toggle switches below that are the generator. If I need to start my generator, just press and hold this button down. You can hear it priming and it's flashing, that means it's priming and preheating. Once it's ready primed and ready to start, the generator will start up. When I'm finished using the generator, I just press the stop button. And keep in mind if, uh, if the tank for my fuel level is below one quarter, I won't be able to start my generator or operate my ITR Oasis. The front fan, um, we, we, uh, we have a front fan high, medium, low here for the overhead fans, but this front high, medium, low is for the ITR Oasis convector heat for feet down here. So that convector that throws heat out here can be turned on here low or high. Middle is off. The entrance lock for the main entrance door is here. You can lock here. And again, we, we talked about the 360 degree camera earlier. Just to the right of that is our control for the cockpit uh, air conditioning or heating and defrost uh, with the engine on and running. I can select uh, the fan speed and the temperature. This would be the red to the warm, left is uh, cooling. If I want air conditioning, I press the snowflake. Uh, if I want the air conditioning with outside air, I just leave this circulating off. But if I want to recirculate the cool air on a really hot day and get it cooled down fast, press that button, the amber light comes on. Now I'm just recirculating the air inside the coach instead of bringing um, air from the outside in. And this can be adjusted for temperature. So I can leave the air conditioner on and adjust it to the temperature I want, or I can go all the way cold. If I'm gonna put the uh, defrost on, I wanna come over here to the defrost and if I want to melt or have any fog defrost off, then I want to set it to a warmer temperature over here and typically leave the air conditioner on to get rid of any moisture on the windshield. If I want to turn the um, heating or cooling HVAC off in the cockpit area, I can just turn this off here and turn these off. Just below the HVAC cluster for the cockpit, I've got a uh, 12 volt auxiliary here and uh, USB-C here. Below that, I've got the um, cup holders and a secondary drawer. Moving over uh, to the uh, passenger side of the dash, you can see additional uh, vents that can be opened or closed. The one on the far end always stays on. Uh, that's to help defrost the window on that side. 
In addition to the CO2 detector in the bedroom, you have a smoke detector here in the front of your coach, uh, the living area. Just to test and make sure uh, that this is working, um, you can see the, the small LED light flash. That's an indicator that it's on, but to make sure that the sound is working and that you can hear the tone uh, for warning, you press in the center and you'll hear a tone And you'll, once you hear that, that's, that audible tone tells you that the battery has enough power uh, and the LED light is working so that it would give you a tone um, if there was any smoke detected. Just in the overhead at the driver's seat, uh, we have this instrument cluster here and we'll start at the top left and we'll work our way down and then we'll tell you what these do and how to operate them. You've got the router for your Wi-Fi Ranger here. So this router uh, has a password. You'll want to use the password to connect uh, to the router. Uh, that will pull in Wi-Fi from the antenna on the roof. Um, you've got your um, WineGuard satellite on the roof. You'll have to turn this on. Um, it has uh, the power button here along with the search and the stow. On the left-hand side at the bottom here, you've got your uh, outside awning. Um, extend and retract here. You've got your WineGuard over-the-air TV antenna. As soon as you turn it on, it scans and it looks for channels available. It looks like we have 10 available here. You can make minor adjustments left or right here. Um, if you want to go back and research, it'll uh, go back into the search mode and find channels if you don't think you got enough on your scan the first time. If you're using the over-the-air antenna, which this is what it's doing, it's finding channels for you for over-the-air. If you want to use cable, you want to make sure this is turned off. If this is left on, you're only going to get over the air channels. So if this is on, you're going to get over the air. If it's off, then you'll get cable. Just to the right of that is our um, power management control board. Uh, this will tell you that you're plugged into a source of power and what that source amperage is. Now we're plugged into 50 amp. Um, it has the up and down uh, scroll uh, arrows. It tells you uh, what power is coming in on each line. It tells you what the load is in amps on each line. And if it has to go through uh, and shed anything, if, if your uh, power source is not supplying enough power to operate everything you've turned on, it will go into load shed and it tells you the load status on each one of those and if it's uh, gone into load shed. Um, it also tells you that the battery charger is normal. It says the inverter is off. So that's uh, the way you can scroll through your panel and see what is turned on, what the amperage loads are, and if there's any loads that have been shed. Uh, they will indicate on this panel. Uh, just to the bottom here of the wine guard, uh, you've got your Gerard um, awning control. There's a separate handheld device that you can use outside, but basically this turns your LEDs on the awning. And then you can run it in and out here and then stop on channel one or two. Uh, channel zero is for both awnings to extend or retract at the same time. So if you leave it in zero, you're going to be running both of the main awnings out at the same time. If you choose channel one or two, you're just going to be running either the front or the rear awning in or out. Just to the right of that, we have our security lights. Um, we can turn on and off here. We have our step exterior switch and that overrides 
uh, the door uh, switch so that our steps will stay out when we close the door. Typically, uh, the steps retract when the door is closed and they extend when the door is open, but if you want that to be overridden, then you would press that button and the steps would always stay out no matter if the door was open or closed. Just to the right of that, you've got your slide slide out control uh, for the off door side or the driver side, and then your door side, which is here at the door. On this side, uh, you've got in and out uh, for either one or both. Just to the right of that is our controller for our Magnum inverter. The inverter is a battery charger and it also takes and will supply power to the uh, devices in our kitchen. In case we're dry camping, uh, we can still operate the refrigerator and other 120 volt appliances as long as our inverter is turned on. So pressing that button uh, turns our inverter on and then you can refer to your owner's manual uh, to set uh, these uh, there are settings down here for your AGS, for instance. Um, you can set up your um, automatic gen start here. As you scroll through on the dial, just refer to your owner's manual and it'll go through those settings uh, with you. Um, if you want to have your inverter off, just press the bottom lower one here. Uh, you can also independently uh, turn the charge function on and off here, but the main inverter is turned off on the lower left button here. If you leave your inverter on all the time, there's our indicator light for the inverter on. If you leave your inverter on all the time, you may run your batteries down. Unless you're plugged in, of course. So that uh, there is one additional plug up here um, for your receiver. Uh, set your receiver up here um, for your uh, satellite receiver um, that plug it can plug in right here uh, this is a plug uh, for the um, wi-fi router looking at the driver's seat and some of the controls that you have uh, for the driver's seat are down below here um, you've got the forward and back and the same lever tilts the seat forward and back um, You've got the footrest, which will only operate if the park brake is set. You've got the lumbar support here. You've got the tilt lever, so we can tilt the seat back. Um, you also have the release for the seat. So once I pull the release up, I can rotate the seat over into the living room area, but to do that, I want to make sure that I have the seat far enough forward so that it clears both the back, the seat back, and the armrest uh, when I rotate. So now I can turn and make sure um, there is an uh, adjustment for the wheel, so we can make sure that wheel is out of our way. Now we can rotate the seat around, make sure that we're not going to hit the wheel or any other part of the dash. Now we're out into uh, facing the living room area. Uh, to put the seat back, we just turn it again, and it will lock back in position. There is an adjustment here for the armrests. There's a little lever uh, that you can pull up um, right here on the front of each one. And as I pull that up, I can move it. But then once I release, it locks in that spot. So I can lock it down here um, or right here, wherever I, I feel comfortable with my arms being that it locks into place. Uh, if I want to move them all the way up, I just pull up on the release and stow it out of my way for either or both. If I just want to turn instead of crawl out of the seat, I can just turn the seat and I can get out that way as well.
So the passenger seat controls are almost identical uh, to the driver's side, forward and back. Um, we've got our footrest up and down. We've got our lumbar support. And of course we can lift the release and we can turn our chair all the way around into the living room area here. And when we're finished, we can just uh, turn it back as we're sitting in it, or if we wanna get out, we can turn the seat back this way as well. It locks back into place. The armrests are the same. They have a release here, so you release, set it where you want, and it locks into place. There is a table, folding table here on the right side that I can put down and I can fold my table out uh, for refreshments, um, map or laptop, iPad, whatever I'd like. Um, as you're a passenger, you may want to have uh, help your pilot navigate. Uh, fold down and then back. That folds right out of our way. At the front here, we have the shades down, but if you grab a hold and pull down, manually retract. This is the blind, so if you just want a little bit of shade, you can go this route. If you look here in the wheel well, move the seat back just a little bit you'll see that there is a switch uh, panel here uh, with the red light that's our battery connect and disconnect if the light is red that means our batteries are connected our battery disconnect is on this switch over here is for the baggage doors you can hear the baggage doors lock and unlock if we turn the battery disconnect off, we're gonna lose power in the coach. That's power off in the coach. That's power on in the coach. If I cycle the power, you're gonna hear the radio come back on, and then you're gonna to have to turn the light switch back on for the ceiling if you had your lights on. On the top, you have an additional cluster here with the phone charging device. Uh, your patio lights for the outside also give you a light on this first step well. Uh, you have an overhead map light. And this step cover, um, you'd want to operate that if you're going to uh, be on the road, but you want the floor to be level here so your feet aren't hanging down. They're actually on the floor. You can step up here and push this down, and you'll see the step cover extending and then it raises up to be level with the floor. And so now you can stand on the floor level in the coach uh, without having to worry about the steps. If you want to retract it, just go in the opposite direction and it stows back in its original position. Just to the rear of the, we'll pull our shade down, just to the rear of the co-pilot seat, you've got your ceiling light control. You can also turn the bathroom lights, bedroom lights, or accent lights on and off from here. Uh, there is a floor heat control. Um, you have high, medium, and low. And if you turn that on, one of those, uh, the heating light will illuminate. So that gives your indicator. If I turn this off, then all the lights will go out. There's an additional 120 volt plug here. You'll notice that it has uh, two charging ports here for USB. USB. In the front, Overhead in the center here, uh, we have a television. Uh, this TV 
uh, can be mirrored with the other one, so you can watch both TVs at the same time. Uh, when the ignition's on, the front TV does not work. Moving back uh, to the living room area, um, you've got an overhead cabinet here. Um, this is the audio visual cabinet. The cabinet um, has the connections uh, for your HDMI and your cable. Um, this is where you would put uh, your uh, uh, satellite receivers, DVD players, um, and those connections are all here and they're pre-wired. Just to the uh, inside of the cabinet, uh, you've got a switch, um, ground mount and satellite. This is called an AB switch. You can turn it to uh, whichever selection you want, whether it's satellite or ground. Um, just by pressing the button up or down, you're selecting the one up or down to make that connection. Above the audiovisual cabinet, you have your Bose speaker, uh, which you can Bluetooth to. Um, that uh, speaker um, comes through the television, um, or you can make the choice to Bluetooth it. To operate the Bose speaker, there's a separate Bose remote that you can use uh, to turn that volume up or down or to mute it. Uh, because the TV sound is coming through the sound bar here. We have our television that's hidden behind the sofa. Uh, if you lift that, the TV lift will bring it up and we can look at how to make those uh, come on and off. The TV lift is, uh, switch is over here. So you've got TV lift up, down, press up, and our TV lift will go up. Um, with each TV, you have your Samsung remote. Um, you can turn on. Uh, once you turn on the television receiver, which is in the front overhead, it's called the wine guard. Now you can select uh, by scrolling with these arrows here at the bottom or the center. You come over here to the bottom gear icon to scan for channels. Then you press that center arrow. Then you're going to scroll down here to broadcasting. And you're going to press auto program so that you're going to scan for all the channels that you can. You want to auto program, so you hit start. Now, on a Numar coach, you can only scan air or cable. You can't do both at the same time. Because if you remember, if our antenna's on, it's only going to give us air. If our antenna's turned off for the wine guard, then we can watch cable. So we're going to scan for air first. And it's going to show us a scanning for channels and how many channels we receive. Okay, so our scanning is complete. Uh, 40 channels were found, which is quite a few. If you only were able to pick up a few, you could rescan, but in this case, 40 channels were good. So we're gonna close the screen by pressing that center button. And now we can exit out go back to the home button. But anyway, we've scanned our channels. Uh, the same applies for scanning for cable. You're going to have to scroll to the bottom here and go to the gear icon. You're going to have to turn off the receiver for air channels here. You're going to turn this one off. Now you're going to go back to broadcasting. You're going to make sure to go back to your cord reel compartment and plug your cable into your cable box in the back if you have park cable. 
so that the cable's connected. Once you connect your cable, you can come back in here and then you're going to auto program. But this time, you're going to select cable. And it will scan all the cable channels. Now, since we're not plugged into any cable, it's not going to pick any up. But that's the way the process is done for uh, selecting either cable or air. You have to do both uh, before you pick uh, either one up. To pick up our air channels, we have to turn our receiver back on. Now we can watch over the air TV because our receiver for the wine guard is turned back on. Just refer to your owner's manual for additional information on uh, your television setup. So the sofa here opens up into a bed. And to do that, we just remove the pillows. And these are Velcroed on the back, so you can just loosen those up and move them. Now we just, there's a, uh, a lifting handle loop here. We want to grab a hold of that and lift up. That releases, and then we want to pull out. The legs on the front automatically extend. And then the seat back just folds down. And there you have your bed. So just reverse that process to stow it. Put this back up. Lift up on this loop in the front. Legs will automatically stow. So this has the dual recliners. Uh, the recliners are operated with a switch here on the inside of the right handle. So if I'm sitting in this seat, I would just grab a hold of this and that's gonna extend my footrest and I can lean back. Um, to retract it, just push down manually with your feet and it locks back into place and it turns. These are mobile. So if you needed to, you could move the seat uh, wherever you wanted in the living room. The shade is a manual one on the back here, so you can lift your shade up or down. The windows are crank in and out. They have screens on both sides. You just turn the crank and that opens the window and to the left is closing it. Same with the uh, end wall on the slide um, the only difference is there's no crank that's just open and as you open then you would lift the window when you're done just put it down and lock it in place again the tv lift ceiling lights and those panels are here there's additional storage cup holder and storage drawer here. Now you've got the overhead storage here. Moving over into the uh, dining area, um, you've got uh, ceiling controls for your lighting and the dinette here. That's your seating and wall control here. Uh, and then of course you can dim or make them brighter here. You got high and low. Uh, there's another outlet for 120 volt and chargers. The shade is manual here. 
in the kitchen. Has the same type of windows with screens, open and close. There are cabinet, cabinet space here, along with drawer space on both sides. In addition to uh, the additional cabinet space underneath the table uh, with the large drawers on this side as well. To accommodate more people at the dining area, um, this uh, table pulls out. Uh, there is a chair underneath the bed in the bedroom. We can add that chair here. Just to the left of the dining area, you have the push to open drawers for the pantry. Just push and then pull. If you don't push, you won't be able to pull them out. They stay locked in position. So you've got uh, numerous drawers here for storage. The refrigerator is a stainless steel Whirlpool, three doors. Uh, Numar adds a storage door lock, which is here. Uh, the lock is engaged, so now the doors will not open. Uh, it locks all three doors. To unlock, just move this black uh, slider to the right. Now the doors will open. Inside the refrigerator, you'll see uh, in the back a fresh flow uh, ventilator fan uh, that comes with additional uh, charcoal filters. Uh, in the back at the top right is a water filter. Uh, the refrigerator comes with the water filter. So you would just open this door here and insert the water filter uh, for fresh water filtration. The fresh water filtration uh, is here. The water is cooled as it comes in the refrigerator. Depressing this will uh, fill your cup. To turn the refrigerator on and off, uh, there's two arrows here. If you press and hold these down, the refrigerator comes on. Um, now we can set the refrigerator uh, to the desired temperature, fast, cool. Um, if we change a filter, we want to hold here for three seconds to reset. Uh, same here, if we change the water filter, we want to reset here and then it will tell you the next time those filters need to be changed. If we want to change the refrigerator temperature, we can press this button here for colder. Um, if we press it again, that would be warmer. Same with the freezer temp. We can adjust the freezer temp colder this way or warmer um, with less snowflakes. In the bottom freezer section, you'll notice a tray this tray is to catch the ice that's being made here by the ice maker. If you don't want the ice maker to make ice, there's a lift or bail arm here. Just set the bail arm up and then it won't make ice. But as long as you leave the bail arm down, uh, this will make ice if the water is turned on to the refrigerator. So up is off and down is to make ice. Again, before you travel, uh, you don't want these doors to open in transit, so you want to make sure and lock the uh, doors by uh, moving this black handle to the left. Now your doors are locked. They won't open uh, when you turn a corner uh, going down the road. To turn the refrigerator off, it's the same as turning it on. Just press and hold the two outside buttons. And now we're off. Starting here in the kitchen area, uh, you've got more cabinet space here and here. If you look to the right side of the microwave, you'll see a plug. Uh, that's the plug 
that needs to be inserted into the receptacle uh, to make the microwave work. Um, this cabinet has an extra pull-out drawer here. Um, and if you look here on the inside of the door, um, we've got additional information on the coach, coach serial number, uh, paint codes, and a couple notices here with the warnings. Um, just pay attention to those if you need uh, to look up uh, anything. You can, uh, can also scan the QR code here um, in addition to looking at the printed information. Um, if you look back on the inside here, uh, there's another uh, decal that we put that has all the uh, weights and uh, numbers um, for this coach. Uh, working our way down here to the sink, um, both sides here are covers that are removable. Uh, these can be uh, removed and stored down here. Inside of your coach, uh, every Numar has um, the owner's operator's manuals and warranty registration tags. So all of your owner's manuals, operator's guides, and warranty registrations are in side of this black case. Uh, so anything about the plumbing, heating, exterior, electrical, or appliances are all contained here. And you should go through this and review all of this information. Um, that also includes your owner's operator's manual. Um, in the base here, you've got the trash. Uh, the sink has the retractable, retractable uh, sprayer, and um, there's a weight that pulls that back into place, um, hot and cold, on and off. To the left of the sink, you have your cooktop. On the inside back of these covers, um, you have a cutting board that you could use if you will, if you wish. On both sides, there is a cutting board, so you can set those out here if you like. This is a true induction cooktop, so um, once it's powered up, it's only going to operate if the pan that's located on either burner is magnetic. So as long as you have a, a magnetic pan, uh, you can set those pans here and you can adjust the temperature. If you don't set anything on here um, and turn it on, it automatically shuts off. Um, this can be removed and unplugged and it's mobile. You can take it outside and do your cooking outside if you wish. When you're finished, just take your covers and put them back in place. That just will protect the range. This is this right side. That protects the cover. Uh, to the left side here, we have additional drawer space. Uh, the louver at the bottom uh, has a blower in the back, which blows out heat in the kitchen area. If you want additional uh, countertop space, uh, this, uh, well, this assembly pulls out all the way. There's a release button here at the top. If you press that, you'll be able to hear it release. And now you can pull this out uh, for extra uh, countertop space. And again, these drawers open and close. When you're finished uh, with the extension, uh, just press and push it in and it, you'll hear it lock in, this, in it, its original location. So now you're locked in place. Uh, we have our Fisher Paykel uh, dishwasher. Um, follow the owner's operator's guide for the operating instructions for this. You'll notice here, uh, since it's not powered up, it's in the locked position.
if we turn it on, now we'll be able to open and close the door. Uh, but if there's no power, uh, you won't be able to open it. So it has to be powered up to open and close the door. Otherwise, the door stays locked. If it's powered up and it's unlocked like this is, you don't want it to be open in transit. So you have to press the lock button. There's another drawer on the uh, right side here, another vent for louver for the... Uh, air movement for the heating. Uh, just above that is the fantastic vent. If you want to get some air movement in the kitchen while you're cooking, or if it's too warm in this area, just turn the overhead fan on here. You can hear it open the vent and it turns on. If it's raining, or you have a, just a little bit of mist uh, that might turn the rain sensor on. It won't let the fan open. You can change the speed settings here, up or down. I can slow the fan down. Um, when I'm finished, I just press this off and the vent will close. If I need to do any service to the vent and um, or open it manually, I can just grab a hold of this cover and I can remove it. If I want to open it manually, I can just turn this knob and the handle will open the lid. When I'm finished, I can just close it manually as well. To reinstall the cover, just line up my lock pins to the tabs. And push up. This cup is a sensor for this zone uh, for air conditioning and heat pump. Um, there's a small sensor in there that tells the air conditioner when this room is warm, warm enough or cool enough, and then it will turn the air conditioner or heat pump on and off. So in the ceiling overhead, uh, you'll see another panel here. This panel drops down on this side so that you can access the uh, ventilation and clean out the filters. So you want to come into about the center and just reach up and over and pull down slightly. And that releases the magnets. And then just let it come down. And now you can see there's a row of filters and a row of discharge air. This duct goes all the way front to the rear so in the other panel in the back, you'll have to do the exact same thing. Just lower it down and grab a hold of the filter louver and pull down. And you'll take your filter out and clean it off uh, with compressed air or vacuum. And then wash it in warm, soapy water. Let it air dry. Put it back on. And then reinsert. And you have to do that to each of those filters at least monthly to make sure your uh, air conditioner has good return airflow so that you have good cool air or uh, if you're running on heat pump. You want to make sure those filters stay clean. Once you're done with uh, cleaning the filters and reinserting them, you want to put the panel back up in place. It slides forward towards the... Uh, uh, driver's side, just push up and slide it forward. That lines up where it was and then the magnets will catch. So now we can double check here, push up, make sure that our magnets are caught on both sides. We're good. And now we can go to the rear and clean those vents. Inside the half bath, we're going to take a look at the overhead 
And the panels that are inside here are your breakers for your 120 volt, your 12 volt, your lighting controls, and your floor heat. So starting at the top here, if you open this panel, you'll see that all of the breakers are turned on or in the up position or on, including our main breaker. If the main breaker is not up, up and on, then none of these are going to work. So make sure your main breaker is on. And then you can see that these are labeled refrigerator, microwave, uh, washer, cooktop. All of the 120 volt appliances are here. If any of these breakers are tripped off or down, that appliance will not work. So you would, if you see a breaker that's tripped, you need to pull it all the way down and push it back up to reset it. And then that appliance will have power again. Okay, moving over here, these are 120 volt. Moving over here, you've got spare fuses. If you see the fuses on this side, uh, these fuses operate these devices, these um, appliances. So if I move over here, I can read these. You've got furnace, power awnings, wall switches, power vents, HVAC controls. Um, all of those are labeled with a number. Uh, F2, F1 through F20. So if one of those appliances aren't working, look at the number and then go up to the number of that fuse, pull it out and see if it's uh, uh, see if it's blown. So if I remove F20, for instance, you'll notice here the shape of a U. So as long as the U is together and it's not broken, that fuse is good. So I'll put the fuse back in F20. What is F20? Look at it, it says furnace. So that's how you check your appliances. That's how you visually inspect a fuse. Uh, if you need to replace it, be sure and take a 20 from up here to replace it if it's blown. Just below that is our V-Bus lighting control. The lighting control, uh, it controls all the lights in your coach and all of the light uh, wall switches. Uh, when one of those circuits is on and working, you'll see a green light. So as I turn a circuit on for that lighting circuit in that room, uh, the green LED light comes on in conjunction with that uh, light, light switch. Just to the left of our lighting circuit, we've got our floor heat. Floor heat one would be the front, floor heat two is the rear. If for any reason, these are not green, your floor heat will not be operational. So if the GFCI is tripped for some reason in the coach, uh, the heat in the floor will not work for that zone. Same with uh, number one. If you do see that it's tripped, you can just reset it by pressing in uh, the top button. And as long as it turns green, then that floor heat should be back in operating mode. In the bathroom, you have a pull-down shade manual, um, and the windows operate the same as the, other, the others in the coach, open and close, has a screen. Um, you have two large storage cabinets here. Uh, at the very base, you have the intake and the exit vent for the heat, um, blows out heat at the floor level, the small dual fan from the ITR Oasis. ITR Oasis has to be on to get the heat to work. The lit up uh, Dometic uh, module here is to flush the toilet. It's hand operated as you can see as when I pass my hand over it the toilet flushed. There is also a flush button here that you can press if you want to instead of hand wave you can press that and it will flush. If you need to add water and you want the water level in the bowl to come up, you can just press the water level button and the water will come up. You have the medicine cabinet here, dual mirror, a sink. We have on and off, cold and hot. An additional uh, GFCI plug here. The light obviously has to be green for that to be operational. 
This heater fan switch is for the heat to come out down there. So this would have to be turned on and the ITR Oasis would have to already be heated up for you to have the heat in this room or any room. There's a fantastic vent here on the ceiling. So for ventilation out of the bathroom, you'd have to have this one turned on just like in the kitchen. Uh, press the blue button at the top. You have to press and hold it just for a second. And that would open it up and the fan would come on. To close it, just press it again and the fan will close. The ceiling lights are here. Vanity lights are there. Water pump is here. If I need to turn the water pump on to wash hands or flush the toilet, I turn the water pump on here. And that uh, additional storage in the base here. Um, I also have uh, the inner vac um, door that I can open manually and uh, sweep here on the floor. We'll show you how the inner vac works now. In the baggage compartment of your coach, you have the inner vac accessories. So if you get that bag and open it up, you'll be able to plug the hose in here and sweep the inside of your coach. So uh, this needs to be plugged in. So you open this door. There's a sticker here that you'll have to remove. A little warning on here. It says, check to ensure that the dust bag and the motor filter are installed in the power unit. So that power unit is downstairs on the driver's side about the fourth door back. We just wanna make sure that we have our filters installed before we operate this hose handle uh, and pick up any dust. So once we have our hose connected, um, we can connect other accessories um, or extension. Um, but basically, there's a battery in here that turns this on and off. Um, there's a QR code here if you want to scan it and get additional directions online. Uh, basically, you just turn this on, and that turns on the, the vacuum downstairs. Uh, when you're done sweeping and cleaning, just turn it off, and it goes out. If for any reason the LED light doesn't light up, you may need a new battery. If you're storing this... Um, and it's coiled up in here. You just want to make sure this doesn't get pressed inadvertently because that'll turn uh, the vacuum on downstairs. When you're finished sweeping, just open the door, pull this out, and close the door. So in the mid coach, you have your main 10 inch control panel. Um, it's a touch screen. So as soon as you touch it, you'll be able to see um, the home screen the AGS is automatic gen start, floor heat, HVAC, Bluetooth pair, which you pair to your phone if you want, and your lighting control. So starting on the left side at your home screen, you'll be able to monitor your house battery voltage, your chassis battery voltage. You'll be able to see your fresh tank, gray or black. You'll be able to turn on your water pump. Um, you'll be able to uh, turn your lights on and off. You'll be able to see the day and the time. To turn on your automatic gen start, uh, just press the lightning bolt, and now you can go into your setup and set your times that you want it to operate um, or quiet times. You'll be able to go into your floor heat in front of the coach, middle of the coach, or the rear. As soon as you press that location, uh, you'll be able to select whether you want high, medium, or low in that part of the coach. Only when you select and that highlight turns red is that zone on. So to turn those zones off, you just press them again and they go gray. The gray means it's off. Same with the HVAC. Um, once you select the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning icon, now you have the opportunity to select the room zone, whether the living room 
or the bedroom. If I select the living room, now I can adjust uh, what mode I want it to run on. So mode in the front right now is off, but if I turn it to cool, now the air conditioning in the front living room will run. Auto. Auto means that it will select heat pump or cool depending on the temperature I set. So if I set a temperature here in the auto mode, that's just going to choose whether it runs in cool or heat pump. Over on the right side is my Oasis. My Oasis is the ITR or hydronic heater. So if I want to have heat in the coach that's not from the roof heat pumps, I have to turn my burner on and or select both of my heating elements. I will get, uh, along with the heat in the coach, I'll get hot water um, when I turn my Oasis burner on and or my elements. AC one and two uh, are both on when I select this button rather than this one. The burner for the Oasis will only come on if I have a quarter tank or more of diesel fuel in the tank. Otherwise, the Oasis burner will not come on. Um, the next icon over is Bluetooth. You can get the download the Connected Solutions app from the App Store on your phone, and then it, you can connect to the app and press pairing, and your phone will Bluetooth to this screen, and you'll be able to do the same types of controls that you see here on your phone. So if you'd like to do that, you'll be able to pair your phone uh, with this screen, so you'll be able to operate and see this screen uh, whether you're in the coach or out of the coach. You don't have to use the touch screen, you can actually use your phone. And the last icon is for your lighting. So if you highlight living room, kitchen, bath, bedroom, or stool room, you can turn those lights on in those zones. Okay, so moving back into the bedroom, uh, we have a, a sliding door. Uh, the sliding door is locked in the open position and it's also locked in the closed position but to move the door in either direction you have to press down on the release we can do it here or here just press down and then we can close the door it actually moves two doors at once and then it locks back into place right here so now the doors are locked in the closed position can't move them um, to open the doors again, you have to do the same thing. Push down, and then you can open the doors, and they will lock in the open position. So now they're locked here. That's how you operate the sliding doors. There's also a pocket door in the bedroom. The pocket door in the bedroom operates the same way with the black release mechanism. There is some information here on your slide room and the warnings. Um, basically, to operate the rear slide room in or out, is just press and hold this button. In would be retract and out would be extend. The panels here are for your lighting and your floor heat in this zone. So um, the heating is for this zone. You can still uh, turn your lighting on in the kitchen living room here, um, dresser, and you can go high low if you choose. There's additional cabinet space here for your hanging clothes. Down below here we have another audio visual cabinet and this is for the rear TV. So um, it's pre-wired with the HDMI cords and the cable connections. Um, if you choose to add a satellite in the rear, you could. It's all pre-wired. We have the drawers here. The shades are manual, just like the ones in the front. There is an egress window here in case you need to use it as an emergency exit. The directions are here. You want to remove the screen by pulling out on the red handle. Then you push and remove the lever from the locking hook, which is here. Rotate the lever and push through 
the slot in the frame. So the whole thing gets pushed out and then you escape through this opening because the window will fall out and then you would escape out of this opening. If you want to use this window for ventilation only, you can still use it just to get fresh air just by opening it and it will latch in place here. There's additional space for clothes here, for your hanging clothes. Um, there is a safe here. Uh, the safe has a key uh, that's located in your black case that we looked at earlier. To set up the code, use the code that's on the printed literature uh, to open and close it. That's a preset code, but then you'll be able to go in and set up your own code uh, for that safe. Moving over here to the other storage areas in the overhead. There's a 120 volt plug there and here uh, with charging ports uh, for the phone above the nightstand. Uh, the windows are slider windows here, open and close. There's additional light switches here, so you can be laying in bed and turn these light switches on and off. Um, uh, there is the uh, security light switch here, so if you need to turn on your security lights, you can do that here as well. These are for the dresser. These are for the ceiling. We have courtesy lights, um, right hand, left hand, and dresser. On the ceiling in the bedroom is a CO detector. Uh, for your CO detector, if you press and hold that, that will test the CO detector. You'll hear a series of tones. Those series of tones just tell you that it's operational, the battery is good. After you hear the series of tones, uh, it will uh, stop the tones and uh, you basically tested it to make sure that it's in operating mode. If you look to the back side of the slide room, we open the slide room. You'll see here in the bedroom, we have another uh, temperature sensor uh, for the roof air conditioner and the heat. Just below that, we have additional uh, switches for our speakers. So if we're running, uh, operating the radio in the front, but we wanna have the same sound and uh, music back here, we can turn these speakers on and then we can hear what's playing on the radio up front. At the base of the floor, we have another louvered vent for heating from the ITR Oasis convector fans there. And then moving into the bathroom, uh, we have a pocket door that releases in the same way uh, that the slider doors did at the front part of the bedroom. Once it closes, it locks. And you have to press down again to open it. And then it locks in the open position for travel. In the bathroom here, we have the washer and dryer. Uh, the washer uh, and dryer are both 120 volts, so you'll have to have the coach plugged in or the generator turned on to operate. The timer here is for the dryer. If you're going to operate and use the washing machine, you need to have the um, gray tank um, valve open so that the water that's going in and washing your clothes or rinsing your clothes does not completely fill up the gray tank. So you want to have your sewer uh, connections uh, made and your tank for your gray tank open if you're going to be operating your washing machine. There is another exit door here in case you need to exit the coach in an emergency. 
Um, you can see here there's a lock and an unlock for this door. To exit this door, you want to leave it unlocked. And then this is another lock here. Uh, for this handle, you might make sure that that's unlocked. Now you can exit out this door, um, but you'll need to uh, release the ladder. The ladder has a Velcro strap on it, but if we remove the Velcro strap, we can open the ladder and the ladder will extend down. So now we can crawl down and get out of the coach uh, without without uh, jumping. To store the ladder again, we just lift it up and retract it. So this retracts it. Now we can store it back in place with the Velcro. Then we can put our cover back on. And magnets hold it in place. To close the door and lock it again, just slam it closed, lock it, and we're ready for travel. Window operates the same as the other ones with the turn handle and the coach. Right is open, left is closed. And this coach has the Manual pull down shades and visor. The Dometic toilet in this floor plan has the wall flush. You can either wave in front of it to flush it, or you can just push to flush here. If you want more water than uh, the bowl is uh, showing for a standard flush, you can fill and add water to the bowl here. There is a warning light that will turn amber. Um, once the uh, LED for, um, once you see the amber light come on, that means that uh, you only have about five flushes left before the tank would be full for the sewer tank or the black tank. Uh, once the black tank is completely full, the light will go from amber to red. Once this has a red indicator light, you won't be able to flush the toilet. So when you see the amber light, make sure to empty out your sewage or black tank so that you don't get in that situation where the black tank is too full to flush. Above the Dometic control are your um, floor heat again for the um, uh, bathroom. Floor heat, high, medium, and low. Then you have your ceiling controls for your vanity, uh, water pump, and backlighting dim if you need to. Um, again, you have your fantastic vent here. Uh, turning it on, just press the blue button and it will open. We can adjust the speeds here. Down is slower. The LED sensor in the center um, will tell you uh, if the rain sensor is off, the little LED light will light up. To turn it off and close it, just press it and hold, and the vent will close. If for any reason, the automatic functions and buttons don't work here. You can reach up and open the vent here manually if you choose. And then close it. If the fan doesn't work for some reason, there is a fuse that you can check. It's right here. There's a fuse. It's just a glass fuse. Make sure that you have a good fuse for that fan to operate. and just twist to put back in. Medicine cabinets here uh, with the dual mirrors. 
on and off, cold and hot for your sink. There is additional storage here. You have some drawer space here and here. This panel is, re is removable, and there's an another panel, um, an access panel here, um, and that would be uh, access to the engine. Um, these would have to be removed. To put this panel back, just line up the clips and push. Uh, moving into the shower, the door has a lock, so you want to make sure that that's locked. Uh, even though it, it does have magnets, uh, you want to lock it for transit. If you look in the shower here, you'll see um, that it has an indicator so that when the water goes through here, this blue will change colors to a milky white when the water is warm. But to save water, you can use this shower miser, turn it to recycle, which is here, then when you turn your water on, instead of it coming out here, it's going back in the fresh tank until you see this turn milky white. That means it's hot or the water is warm. Then you can turn this valve over to the shower and it will come out um, at the top or uh, the handle uh, when it's already hot. That will just save you from water going down the drain and being lost. Um, this is hot and cold adjustment. Uh, this will uh, turn the uh, this will turn the function from the sprayer on top to the handle. So shipped with your coach are these transportation pads. Uh, these transportation pads have two sides. One is smooth and one is a little rough, more rough. And the rough side, if you put it on the floor, is like an anti-skid. And what these do is they are lined up with each one of the rollers so that when the room comes in, the rollers slide on top of this uh, plastic so that it prevents um, any markings from the rollers uh, being on the tile. So as you can see, we brought the room in just a little so that we can see the roller. Uh, once we see where the roller's at, we put this in line with the roller uh, right up to the edge of the tile. And now when the room comes up, the rollers will uh, ride on this uh, plate. So then we do the same thing on the next one and we do it consecutively all the way down the coach. The other rollers here, we just line that up, put it to the edge of the tile, and we'll do that um, all the way down the slide room. Whenever you're going to run the room in and you're going to travel, if you use these pads, it will protect the surface of your tile. When you come to location and you extend the room out, then you just pick these up, and store them back away until you're ready to travel again. Uh, then you put them back down on the tile and run the room in. And that's how they work. So we're on the outside of the coach and we're gonna do the walk around outside, but first we're gonna look at the headlights, turn signals and marker lights. Uh, the headlights are turned on right now. He went ahead and turned the fog lights on now he's going to go back up and hit the brights, the bright lights. When the bright lights come on, uh, the fog lights will go out. Uh, he's back on fog lights now. Now those are off. Now he's going to demonstrate the turn signals. left and right. Okay, so he's gonna, he's got the lights on again and he's gonna do bright and dim.
Now you saw them change. So that's uh, the way the headlights and the fog lights work together. Uh, if you look at the top, uh, there's a camera at the very top of the windshield between the marker lights and the windshield. That's the 360 degree camera view. So when you have the 360 degree camera view on, that's one that's facing the front and giving you the view on the front. So now we're gonna go ahead and open up the front hood latch. To open the front hood latch, the lever's here. We just wanna grab a hold of that and pull, and it releases it. So now we can just grab a hold, lift up, and the air shocks hold it in place. So starting on the driver's side, over, uh, over here, you'll see that we have the air horns here. We have the ECM. Uh, we also have the hot water spigot here. The hot water spigot um, is only hot when the ITR Oasis is on, turned on. And uh, to winterize uh, this water line, going back to the ITR Oasis, there is a uh, water line drain here. So to drain that, you'd want to open this line. Uh, and then when you're finished, you want to close it. So right now it is open. Uh, moving over here, we see a, a filter. This is the filter uh, for the diesel fuel that goes back to the ITR Oasis. And uh, this needs to be changed yearly. So um, uh, continuing on over, uh, you have your your uh, generator, uh, your generator uh, start stop switch is here. Uh, if you need to manually start the generator, just uh, you can see here there's a, a start and preheat here and then stop here. So you'd want to press towards the start. You can see the light flashes and it goes into prime and preheat. And then once that cycle is complete, the generator will start. You want to make sure your main breaker is on. That's off. You want to make sure that's on so you get power in the coach. When you're done operating the generator, you can turn it off here just by pressing the stop. Uh, this is the oil fill and this is the coolant fill. Uh, for the generator. There is a uh, manual on off switch for the light here. Uh, this is the air conditioning and heating uh, for the uh, dash. Uh, it is uh, controlled uh, by these two devices here for the, the hot and cold door open openings here in the front. Moving over here is your filter line dryers. There's, uh, there's dual filter line dryers for the air conditioning system. Uh, you'll see here, this is the drain hose uh, for all of the air conditioning uh, fluid uh, that collects in this box, it drains out here. You'll see uh, another set of uh, hoses here. These hoses, uh, you can see the uh, kind of fluorescent uh, greenish color fluid. Those are going into the heat convector uh, in the front here uh, from the ITR Oasis. Um, looking straight down, you'll see a reservoir tank. The reservoir tank is for your hydraulic jack system. And then over just to the side of that is the pump. When you're done servicing or viewing anything in the front here at the firewall, you just re reach up and push down and the air shocks will close. You want to make sure to and, uh, latch it here. Turn the light out and then just close the door here and it will latch. Looking at the, uh, the, the door side of the coach at the front, uh, the mirror here uh, 
for travel, you want to make sure that it's adjusted correctly. If, the, if it needs to have any adjustments, there are two places you can make those adjustments if needed. Uh, if you're inside sitting on the driver's seat and you can't get enough uh, movement on the mirror with the power mirror, uh, you may need to come out here and turn uh, this adjustment screw loose uh, so that you can pivot uh, the mirror on this ball and then retighten it. If that's not enough adjustment, you can remove this cover on the bottom and uh, reach up in and get the uh, nut loose off of the bolt and then you can move the whole arm if you need. Uh, just below the mirror, uh, we have our side view camera. Uh, whenever you put your turn signal on the right side, this uh, camera will give you the view to this side so that you know what's coming in your turn lane. Um, just above the door, we have our carefree awning. The carefree awning uh, is 12 volt and is operated from the inside of the coach. So if we want to open that, we just press the, the uh, rocker switch in the overhead and the awning extends. And uh, just uh, press the rocker switch the opposite direction and it will retract. Just below the carefree awning, there is an additional light, which is the patio light. The patio light switch is right in here uh, next to the passenger seat. And it turns the step well lights on uh, when the porch light comes on. The entrance door and entrance door screen. Uh, the screen latches independently from the door. Uh, the door, uh, when it opens and closes, will uh, cycle the step. Uh, there's a magnetic switch here so that when the door closes, the steps go in. In the overhead, we covered there, there is a, uh, a switch in the overhead for the steps that you can turn on, which overrides the magnetic switches here so that they stay out. So if I close the door, uh, the steps stay out because I have the override switch on. Now, if I turn the override switch off and close the door, the steps will go in. So, now in the event that I start the coach with the door closed and I forget to turn the override switch on, as soon as I turn the ignition on, the steps will still go back in automatically. Uh, uh, it overrides that switch. To uh, lock and unlock the door, uh, there is a key fob here. We can use it to unlock the entrance door and the cargo locks. Uh, we can also lock the door manually with the, the lower lock. Um, if we're in the coach and we want to use the deadbolt lock, we lock that manually here the deadbolt doesn't have a key fob to operate. So you have to manually operate the deadbolt when you're inside the coach. To unlock either one of these locks, the keys are marked tri-mark. So the longer one is for the top deadbolt and the smaller round one labeled tri-mark is for the bottom. I can lock or unlock either one Just by going this way is lock, and that's unlock. And then for the deadbolt, you can do the same. Lock and unlock. In addition to locking or unlocking the coach either manually or with the key fob, the door handle can also lock and unlock the coach with a five digit code. When you get the coach new, the Numar code is preset to 
one. So if I wanted to unlock the door, I would just press those numbers, one, two, three, four, four, one, and that would unlock the door. To lock the door with the handle, I close the door, and I can just press the lock button here, and you can hear the door lock. It also locks the baggage doors at the same time. Visitors can ring the doorbell just by pressing this button here. And one, two, three, four, four, one, unlocks our door. The preset code that is already programmed when Numar ships the coach to the dealer, when you get the coach, needs to be changed. So when you become the owner of this coach or any coach, you will need to set your own passcode, which is a five digit code. There's instructions uh, in the owner's operator's manual in the Trimark section on how to change this code. When you do that, you'll enter a new code twice and you'll confirm it uh, with a uh, small switch that's located on the uh, column of the steering wheel. So just refer to your owner, owner's manual for those steps uh, to change your code so that you have the security of knowing the code that nobody else has. Um, when you close the, the screen door, To, um, you, from the inside or outside, you can open the slider here. If you're on the inside, you can see there's a handle. If when you press that down, it unlocks the screen here. There are two latches when the door closes here. When the door latches, it latches twice. It actually has a, a first latch for soft close. If you're just leaving the coach for a minute, just to close the door, you can close it that way. But if you're going to travel and you want the door to be securely closed so that you can close the deadbolt, you have to close it to the second latch. So that what that means is you have to close the door a little bit more firmly. So you'd have to close it like this. Now you can see there's no, no space here uh, of, being in the first latch. If I, if I grab this handle and I just open it softly, you can see it will open just to the first latch. But I wanna, open, I wanna make sure that if I'm around the coach, the first latch is okay, but if I'm gonna travel, I wanna make sure it's in that second latch. You'll notice that when I open the door and I move this latch, it does have uh, play and that's normal. So if you notice that that's moving, that's okay because as the coach is traveling down the road and it's latched, uh, the coach has a little bit of uh, movement and that allows the door to stay locked uh, as the coach has a little bit of flex. Um, as we step up in the coach, um, each of these steps uh, has a step uh, cover and additional storage space below. So you can store things in either one of these steps. Again, uh, we showed how this step cover can come out and um, go up so that the floor is level here. Uh, but we'll show that again really quick. This is extending. And then it lifts. And you can stand on that to be at the level in uh, with the coach here. To retract it, just push the rocker switch that says step cover in the opposite direction. And that stows it away. One of the things that we want to do when we come to a campground or where we're going to park the coach, if we're going to extend our slide outs, we want to make sure that before we extend the slide out that there's uh, 
an even amount of space around the fascia. Um, this, this space or this opening is called the reveal. So that reveal needs to be the same on, on both ends of the slide and at the bottom and top. And you can just do a visual inspection, making sure that that's about three eighths of an inch. If it's not, we want to make sure that the coach is actually on its air ride suspension, um, fully aired up. Uh, always before you run the slide room out, you want to make sure the coach is aired up completely and then run the slide room out. After that, after you extend the slide out, then you want to put your jacks down. So we're going to demonstrate that. We've checked our reveal. Uh, the reveal spacing is about the same. Our coach is on air. The airbags are full. And now we're going to run the slide room out. So he's going to extend the room out now because we're on full air ride suspension. And we've checked our reveals and they're both evenly spaced and the room is coming out now. You'll notice that as the slide uh, comes out, the awning that's mounted on the front fascia of the slide room actually extends the slide topper so that uh, the top of the slide room is protected from rain and or debris. Um, you'll notice here that uh, there is a bulb seal. That bulb seal uh, protects uh, from weather um, and rain. When the slide room is closed, that bulb seal will compress and give us a good seal all the way around uh, the sides and top and bottom of the slide room. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, run the room in to show you how that uh, goes in. You notice the bulb seal going back the other way. And the slide topper awning automatically retracts. So if we move uh, to the um, front wheel here and we look into the, uh, near the frame rail, we'll see two small loops. Those two small loops uh, serve a purpose and you can uh, reach in there and pull either one of those. And what that does is it releases the moisture out of the air system of your coach. Those are called lanyards. So you want to grab a hold of the lanyard, pull it. You'll hear uh, air releasing and the moisture in your coach uh, chassis system uh, gets cleaned out when you do that. Just behind the wheel, we have our uh, fill for the diesel fuel. When you put your diesel fuel in here, it fills the tank from either side. So uh, there is another fuel door on the other side. Um, so it doesn't matter which side you uh, are filling up from. Once you tighten it, you'll hear the click. That tells you that it's ready. To, it's tight and ready to go. Just below that, we have our marker light on the side here. So in our first baggage door on the passenger side, we open here and we can see that at the front, there's a 120 volt outlet along with the 12 volt so that if you had a basement freezer in here, you could plug it into 12 volt and 120 volt because most of those basement freezers run on both. So in case you don't have 120 volt, you would have the 12 volt supply. You'll notice here on each of the doors, as we work our way back, there's a magnetic switch. The magnetic switch turns the lights on, the strip lights, the LED strip lights on and off. So when this closes, that We'll turn the light off. Um, 
With the coach uh, comes this awning uh, rod. The awning rod uh, is used to hook into the loop of the window awning and then pull that down and you can hook the awning loop here if you want to leave your window awning in the open position. Once you're ready to store, you just put your awning rod back in and then just close the window awning. And that works the same way on uh, all of the window awnings of the coach. Um, a handy tool for the lanyards and removing the moisture uh, when you pull the lanyard is this awning rod does the same thing similar to the uh, window awning just pull down and you can hear the air releasing the moisture on both you'll notice uh, abs covers here these abs covers um, protect the awning adjustments and the awning motor in this compartment Moving back to the second door, we have our manual sliding tray. And when we're done with the tray, we just push it back in. It latches the same way. You'll notice the strip light over here is on uh, when the door is closed, the magnetic switch touches, these lights will go out. In between the frame rails of this compartment, you'll notice the magnum inverter. In case you would need to reset a breaker or reset the on-off switch, or if you needed to reset an error, there's buttons on the side of the inverter, and you would have to get in this compartment and go to the inverter and reset those switches or the buttons manually. Provided with your coach is the Girard remote control. This mirrors the same control that's in the overhead above the driver's seat. Girard also gives you this uh, manual uh, tool to open and close the awnings in the event of a power loss or motor failure. We have to make sure that we press the unlock button here. If we press the lock button, it will say L. So we press unlock and now we can see that it's set to zero. If we scroll, we have one, two, or zero. So one is the front awning, two is the rear awning, and zero is both awnings. So if I wanna open both of the upper large patio awnings, uh, set the remote to zero and then press out and then both awnings will come out at the same time. I can stop them halfway if I like, just by pressing the stop button. And to continue moving out, just press the out button again. Once they're fully extended, they stop automatically. There is a sensor on, the, on, on both awnings so that in the event that the wind picks up and the awning starts to move, uh, the safety features built in that the awning will automatically retract. So uh, in, in, in windy conditions, the, autom the awning will automatically go in. Okay, so once you've extended the awnings and uh, uh, a windy condition might arise, uh, if you're gonna leave the coach, um, you have to make sure that there is power, 120 volt power to the coach uh, that your or maybe your inverter is on um, because these awning motors operate on 120 volts. So in a windy condition, if one came up 
you'd want to make sure that your 120 volt power supply to the awnings is engaged. Uh, just to give you a, a demonstration, if I move the awning to simulate a windy condition, if I move that enough, the wind sensor will cause the awning to retract. It's actually a motion sensor, not a wind type sensor. To operate the LED strip lights that are on the bottom here, uh, I set the channel to zero, which is both, and then just depress the, uh, the light switch and I can turn the LEDs on and off. And to run them both in, I'm set to zero, so that's gonna operate both awnings at the same time. I just press in, and now both awnings will go in. So in the event of a power failure or a motor failure on your Girard awning, uh, this is supplied with your coach from Girard. On the top, at the center of each of the Girard awnings, there's a, a hole and, the, and when this is inserted in that opening, this can be then rotated manually and the awning will retract or extend. So you can always move the awning manually with this tool uh, for either the front or the rear awning. This is the entertainment center door. To open this door, you have to unlock it here. Rotate it so it's vertical, that unlocks it. And we have our television and our sound bar here. Uh, the television can be moved and angled to where you like it to point. Um, on, the, on the side at the rear here, there's a switch. Uh, it's a Bose uh, switch. Um, there's one, uh, you can set it to dash radio, so the dash radio sound, sound bar would come on as long as it's set to house mode on the inside radio. There's off, and then if we want the sound bar to have the TV coming through the sound bar, then we just go set it to TV. Uh, just above that control, you have 120 volt with two USB uh, outlets uh, for charging or accessories. When you're finished, just close and relock. So, just above the uh, entertainment center, you have our uh, kitchen windows. Um, above that, of course, is a slide topper awning. Uh, this is the 360 degree side view camera. So when we're in the 360 degree view, this camera is uh, picking up everything on this side of the coach. In this compartment door, uh, we have another slide tray for storage. This is the uh, intervac vacuum accessories and the handle for turning it on and off. You can see the vacuum is right here and you can also connect to it right at this position the same way that we did in the kitchen with the same connecting hose. You'll notice that Numar includes uh, additional tile. Uh, these tile come from the same lot uh, that we used when we made the floors and sides so that if you do need to change a tile, the color will match. Um, back on the frame rail here, you'll notice um, we have uh, the TV splitter controls, uh, the bedroom slide room control. Um, these two white controls uh, these white boxes are for the Girard awning. If you wanted to operate the Girard awnings extend or retract, 
You can do that manually right here at the bottom. You'll feel uh, the buttons in the center ones stop and out. So if I press these buttons, I can actually press the button and I can open and close the Girard awning from here. So once I depress it, the awning opens. I can stop, hit the middle button to stop it. And then the button on the opposite end of the opening would be closed. I get it right, there we go. And that closes the awning manually. This one obviously is for the rear awning. This one would be for the front. It has the same series of buttons on the front awning. Um, we have another auxiliary GFCI plug. We have our uh, plug for our tank heating pads. And both Girard awnings, as we spoke about earlier, are plugged into a 120 volt power source here. When we're finished in this compartment, we just push to close and it will latch here. The next compartment back is our pegboard compartment. Uh, the pegboard compartment is used to uh, store uh, items on the pegboard or below. Behind the pegboard compartment is your tanks. So if you ever needed to access the tanks, it would be through here. This 120 volt connection box is for the floor heat connections. Uh, just above this door is a side marker light. The window just above is the bathroom window, and above that's your security light. Uh, this is our tag axle. If you notice, uh, between the uh, tires uh, is your jack and your jack pad. If you need to check your jacks to make sure they're fully retracted, you can just come back here and look visually inspect it right here. If we need to add air to the uh, either, either set of tires, uh, you can add here for the outside tire and here for the inside tire. Just above uh, the back rear wheel, there's another set of lanyards. Uh, those lanyards can be seen right here. I'm pointing to them and they can be uh, re you release the uh, moisture in the rear tank the same way. Just grab a hold and pull, and that releases the moisture. Same with the other one. Just grab and pull. That should be done uh, periodically. I would do it weekly if I was uh, going to be making sure the moisture was out of the air system. So in the rear compartment door, on the driver's side, you can see here, uh, starting at the top, we have our two chassis batteries. The two chassis batteries are turned on and off, especially when you store them right here. So if I'm gonna put this coach in storage, I wanna make sure to turn both of my disconnects to zero, and that disconnects those batteries from the coach so they don't have a continuous drain on them. When I come back to the coach, in order to be able to start the coach, I'm gonna to have to turn them back on. And now I have power at my dash uh, to operate the functions in the dash and to start the coach. Just below the batteries, I have the fuses in this circular panel. I can rotate it left to unlock. And the fuses are labeled here uh, for the chassis items. Uh, just to name a few, we've got clutch, ECM, trailer, right, stop, turn. So if I'm towing a vehicle and I have uh, light issues for that tow vehicle or trailer, those fuses are in this location and they're all labeled. There are additional fuses here inside. If I need to change a fuse, there's a small fuse puller here uh, that you can use to grab the fuse and pull it out. When you're done, just put that back in. 
So once you've checked your fuse, if you had to make a replacement, you'll need to put this cover back on to keep uh, the weather and elements out of the compartment. Just rotate it and then turn to lock clockwise. These are filters for the uh, fuel and engine systems. Once you're done in this compartment, just close the door. It's ventilated to the outside so it's not completely airtight. You have another marker light here at the rear. Just above that is the dryer vent for the dryer inside above the washing machine. This is the exit door to the outside from the bathroom and the window for the bathroom. We're going to give you a demonstration of the the brake lights, the brake lights are coming on now. The third brake light up in the center. Those are the marker lights that you see he just turned on. Now we're gonna do uh, the turn signals, left turn, right turn. Now he's gonna start the coach and put it in reverse. And you see these LED uh, strips will light up uh, for backing up. So you'll notice uh, there's a camera. There's actually two cameras in the back of the coach. The one at the top is the rear view camera. That rear view camera is uh, separate from this rear view camera. This is the 360 degree camera. That's the rear view camera. To gain access, to the engine compartment, you have to remove the ladder first. It lifts up, but you first have to unclip the bottom. So you reach here, push the clips in, and then you can pull the ladder out. Now you can lift the ladder off and away so you can open that compartment. So here we would pull down, and this is gonna come out. So you wanna make sure you have one hand here when you pull down because this, this can spring out. You don't want it to spring out at you. Starting on this side, this is part of the hydraulic system reservoir. That reservoir uh, can be checked here. Just refer to your owner's manual uh, for more information, but you can check your uh, hydraulic fluid level here. After you're, you're done checking it, just push down and rotate this uh, back till it's tight. Uh, just to the left of that is your engine oil and dipstick. Uh, just grab a hold of your dipstick, pull out, and check your level. If you need to add any oil, uh, obviously that's right here. We just twist the cap off and add oil here. To the left of the oil fill is your engine coolant. The engine coolant has an eye. This eye has a reddish color uh, fluid. Make sure that this glass viewing window has that fluid in it. If there's no fluid, it'll be just a, a glass color. Uh, there, there won't be any uh, reddish tone to it and you would need to add fluid. If you need to add fluid, you want to make sure that the engine and radiator is completely cooled down. You don't want to open this uh, to add any fluid if this is warm or hot. Just leave that closed until it cools down. Uh, to the left here, we have our transmission fluid. If we need to add to that, here's where we do it. This is our air filter uh, sensor or indicator. Um, if the air filter needs to be replaced, uh, this yellow indicator, which moves up and down, uh, should be in the green. If it ever moves all the way up when the engine's running into the red, 
that means your air filter um, needs to be replaced. It has some uh, blockage, it's becoming dirty. Um, so check this with the engine running, make sure that this yellow diaphragm, which moves up and down, stays in the green range. Refer to your owner's manual for more information on that. If you'll notice here, uh, that air system has its pickup hose that comes up on the side in the corner. It actually goes all the way up to the screened area on the cap. If you have an issue where it's not getting enough air, you want to make sure and check that there's no air blockage on that screen. That's where the air goes in, it goes down the tube, and then it goes in the engine. At the bottom of the engine compartment, we have our tow plug here. And if you have a tow brake that's air operated, uh, this is the cover that you'll need to remove. In your Spartan bag, there's an adapter that comes with the coach. Once we are done accessing the engine compartment, we just put our ladder back in place. Hook it here. And then push the tabs so we can insert it. and make sure that the tabs pop out here and that it's locked. So moving to the driver's side of the coach at the rear door, we open that, we can see we have additional storage space. This 120 volt plug is labeled block heater. So if we want the engine to uh, preheat uh, on a cold morning, um, and you want the engine to preheat so it doesn't have to start cold, this needs to be plugged in here. And then you'll have uh, the block heater uh, preheat the engine. Uh, you'll have to be plugged in 120 volt uh, shore cord or your generator operating for that to work. This uh, second door forward is another storage compartment that has the manually operated light. And the third door forward is our DEF fill. Just twist to open and you add your DEF there. Turn clockwise to close. To add air, if you need to, the tire air fill is here. You have to twist the cap off to put the air in. Moving forward between the axles is your jack. Uh, you can inspect your jack to make sure they're in the up position for travel and um, make sure the jack pad is in good shape and that it's on. Just above, uh, between the wheels is a storage compartment for your sewer hose. Just above that, we have uh, another window awning, uh, the same uh, pull, pull handle that we used on the other side works here. Pull that down until that loop would be inserted here and that will hold that window awning open. This compartment is the water bay. Uh, the water bay is a heated compartment if the ITR Oasis is turned on so that it's protected in cold weather environments. So if we start on this side of the water compartment, you'll see that this is our water supply to the coach. So if we connect this hose to a water supply, the water will go in through the hose, come up here, and it fills this container that has a filter. That filter is a replaceable filter. Since this coach is new, it has not yet been installed. So you'll need to remove this, and there is a wrench that's in that comes with your coach. You can manually turn it here to remove it. 
and then you would insert the filter here and then put this back in place. That's your whole house filter and it will filter all your water coming in the coach. Once the hose is pulled out and you want to retract it, there is an electronic electric switch here. You can just press it and that will reel the hose back in. One note, um, you don't want to have more than 60 PSI connected to your water system. Um, just to the left of our water filter is our sewage rinse. So if we wanted to rinse the sewage tank after we emptied it, this is the connection that you'd open and put your water supply here uh, to rinse. It says open the gate valve when in use. So if we're going to rinse the sewage, the sewage water tank is on that side. This is the gate valve that we would open if we're going to use this rinse. Just to the left of that is our fresh water tank fill. The tank fill has a handle. You can turn it to auto fill or manual fill. As long as you have a water supply connected, you can turn it to manual fill and it will continue to fill the tank until it's full. If you let it fill the tank completely uh, and you're not watching when the tank is full, the tank will, uh, it has a, uh, overflow. an overflow and the water that's overflowing out of the tank will be uh, coming down on the ground. Once the tank is full, you'd want to move this back over to autofill. With this in the autofill, you have to turn the, uh, you have to enable the monitor panel uh, so that if it's in the autofill position, uh, that the autofill is turned on in your monitor panel inside. In the autofill position, if the water is connected, you'll, you will have uh, pressure, the water pressure in the coach, and you can use the water in the coach uh, that's coming in the hose rather than in your fresh water tank. If you want to pull water out of the tank, you have to have the water pump on. In the autofill position, you don't need the water pump on. The water just comes in through the hose and goes into your coach. That's called the city water connection. At the base here, uh, there is a small removable cap. You can take that off. You can connect your sewer hose to here just by rotating it left and removing it. And then the sewer hose will go down and out and connect to the sewer drain. So to drain the sewer, I need to connect that hose and then I can pull either handle to empty out either the gray tank or the sewage tank. I prefer dumping the sewage tank first and then dumping the gray tank second because the gray tank rinses the hose out uh, from all the sewer. Once you're finished, you can retract the hose Put your cap back in place, tighten it, and put our cap back on. If you need to uh, rinse a hose or rinse this area when you're finished, uh, we do provide the shower here. There's uh, hot and cold water here, and you can use the shower handle. Um, you can rinse the area and Wash your hands if needed. You'll see the water pump switch is here. You can turn your water pump on. You'll see the LED light illuminate. Press it again. It stops. You can hear the water pump, which is right here, when it's operating. Um, there is a small screen on the water pump inlet that can be removed. It 
If you have the water pump running, but it's not pumping water, check the screen. Make sure the screen is clean. You can take the screen out and clean it if you need to. Clean that and then just put it back in place. Reinsert and twist to tighten. Make sure you have it firm, grip, and tight. Just to the left of the water pump assembly is a thermostat. If the temperature outside or in this compartment reaches about 38, 40 degrees, this will cycle together. It turns on and you'll notice this convector just above our drain system. It has two fans that will turn on and blow heat out in this compartment. The heat that comes out of this convector comes from the ITR Oasis. The ITR Oasis will only provide heat to this convector if the diesel burner is turned on. And we'll show you that in just a minute. So just to the left of our uh, water pump, we have our hot and cold low point drains. So if we need to drain the water out of the coach, uh, plumbing lines, the cold plumbing lines or the hot, we just open these up and you'll notice water draining out of the cold or the hot. When we're done draining those, we can close them back again. Uh, we would want to do that, especially if we're going to winterize the coach, we want to drain all the water out first and then we could winterize. If we're going to winterize the coach, the directions for winterizing are right up here. Uh, each step that you take to winterize would be your first, just like what we did, you drain the fresh water tank and water lines and appliances. In addition to these low point drains, there's another low point drain for the fresh water tank and there's a handle, a black handle back there. So to drain that, Fresh water tank, I would make sure that this handle is rotated open or towards me so that water in that fresh tank would be drained out to winterize. Uh, the next step is remove the cartridge and the whole house filter. So we wanna make sure and remove this before we winterize out of this. Uh, and then we close the low point valves, which we did. Insert the hose which they're talking about this hose here, which is their winterizing hose, into the antifreeze solution. And then you turn the water pump on and open all the faucets inside and that will pull the winterizing solution up inside as long as we rotate these handles. As it says here, close A, open B. Once we're finished with that, we put the plug back in there will probably be a little bit of the solution left in that hose. That's okay because we're gonna close these uh, reverse position of what we started with. Um, you wanna make sure that you flush uh, the toilet and all the drains so that winterizing solution goes through um, to make sure that those appliances uh, do not have any water in them. And if they have any fluid, it's gonna be the winterizing solution. One thing that you want to make sure of when you're winterizing your coach is that when you turn the shower on to winterize, you want to make sure that the shower miser is not turned into the recycling mode. Otherwise, the fluid is not going to go through the shower. It'll just come right back here to the freshwater tank. So just make sure that the recycling valve in the shower is off. That way the fluid will go through the shower and into the p-trap at the bottom of the shower this compartment is the cord reel compartment the cord reel compartment as we talked about uh, when we were inside the coach has the cable connection here so inside this door you'll see it's labeled cable satellite one tripod and satellite two tripod so those connections are here not all coaches will have the satellite tripod or perhaps the satellite two tripod. Uh, those are options, but all coaches will have at least one cable connection for park cable. Just to the right of that is your cord reel. 
once the cord reel is extended and you're ready to put the cord back in place, it has a power reel and the handle for the switch is right here and you can press that and retract the cord. Just to the left of the cord is the connection device that connects the cord into the coach. You can see the cord comes in here to the surge guard protector. There's also a gray one. This gray one comes from the generator. So what this box does, it is the transfer switch from the generator to the shore cord. If your generator is on, it chooses the generator power to operate your coach appliances. If your generator's off and you're plugged in, it chooses the shore cord to operate the appliances in your coach. There's another panel, which is the monitor panel uh, that gives you uh, the power coming in. It, it gives you a screen that you can scroll up and down for line one and line two. Uh, gives you the current amperage and you can scroll through those screens. Uh, if there is a fault, uh, the fault will appear here and it will tell you what the fault is. Just to the right of the cord reel compartment, or the cord reel itself is a light and the Oasis Gen uh, control and the TMSC100 uh, control for the touch panel monitor upstairs. Just above that is the slide room motor, you can see here. And like I said, once you're done with the shore cord, just remove it from here and you can stow the cord here. The light will go out as soon as the door is closed and the magnetic switch touches. Behind the shore cord compartment, there's an ABS cover. That ABS cover has Velcro on the left and right and you can remove that to see the other fuses that are used to control the power to your coach. So once I pull the Velcro loose on this cover, I'll be able to move the cover around the corner. If I get into position here, I can pull the cover out this way. Now I can see my battery disconnects. So once I remove this panel, I can see all the labels to all the fuses that are back on the wall. To the left are the fuses, to the right are the ones labeled B or breakers. They're like a fuse, only they open when they get uh, too much current and then they will close again later. They don't actually blow like a fuse that you need to replace. So those breakers are labeled B, the fuses are labeled F. So you can see here some of the things that are powered up are dash radio, entry step, um, hydronic T-stat, LP detector, um, uh, power awnings, uh, lighting controls, um, and the fuse size is labeled for each one. So if you do need to change a fuse, if, if it has to be replaced, it's blown, make sure that you replace it with the same size that was in before, never larger, never smaller. So once you've checked your fuse, uh, the breakers uh, are on the right here. These are automatically resettable. Some of the fuses uh, you'll notice that are uh, this type of configuration if this fuse blows, you don't need to actually replace it. You'll just be able to press in the center to reset it. If you'll notice right here, this is your battery disconnect. And way up to the top in the right is your uh, battery isolation manager that connects the house batteries to the chassis batteries and helps each bank charge off of one or the other if needed. So once you're done viewing uh, those uh, breakers and fuses, you can just slide this back into position, rotate it, 
and the Velcro will hold it back in place. So just above our cord reel door is another 360 degree, 360 degree camera view. Uh, we have another long uh, dual window awning that we can pull down and strap if we'd like. In this compartment is your hydronic heating system. This heats your water and it heats the convectors that are located throughout the coach to give you forced air for heating. Um, this system operates off of your diesel fuel. So as long as the diesel fuel tank has at least a quarter of a tank, this will operate. Once the level in your diesel tank drops below one fourth, this furnace will no longer operate. Uh, the fill tube only goes down to a quarter and then it uh, will run out of fuel. So if you want this to operate, make sure your fuel tank is above a quarter uh, level and then to power it up, you would press this button that powers it on. <clears throat> you can hear the fan um, picking up air to come in. If we have the AC heat turned on, uh, that LED light will be on. Whenever any one of the functions are operating, you get a steady or constant green light. If you see any one of the igniter flame out voltage or low water lights come on and they're red, that means there's a fault with those devices. The other faults that may appear that you can view are there's a silver box. A silver box is located just to the back and to the side of, um, of the heater. Um, you can see them at an angle if you look back. If any of those lights on the silver box are red, that's an indication of a fault. So as long as you see green LED lights here, we're good. Red would be a fault, just like red here are faults. So we talked a little bit about the faults that could happen. Any fault is indicated on the lower section of the igniter through low water as a red LED. We see that we'll need to have the unit serviced. If we see LED faults on, that are red on the silver box, those would also have to be serviced. In addition to those red fault lights, if any of these lights that are typically solid green on the upper five positions, if any of these are flashing green, that is also a fault on that indicator. So solid green is what you want to see here on the top five. If any of those are flashing green, that is also a fault, the same as a red solid fault on these or the silver box. When the diesel burner is on and running, you'll be able to look through this view window and you'll be able to see uh, the flame in the back burner area that's kind of a, an orange color orange, uh, whitish orange flame. And you'll also be able to hear that when it's running. When you have the AC element heat uh, turned on in, in, uh, <clears throat> on your touch panel, the touch panel, <clears throat> you can select between one element or two. Uh, one element will give you uh, just enough hot water uh, to, uh, uh, to have for like maybe doing the, the wash, dishwater, um, uh, at the sink, hot water. But if you want continuous hot water, especially on a cool day, you'll need to have the power turned on and the burner in the touch panel, the burner for the Oasis will have to be turned on, especially if it's a cold day and you want uh, heat uh, convectors in the lower compartment for the water bay. Uh, the burner needs to be turned on. Uh, if you like a really long hot shower, again, you need to have the diesel burner on. The AC elements one and two will provide you with a little bit of hot water, uh, but not a continuous source. You can run both at the same time. And 
you can run the diesel burner and the electric elements at the same time. You'll notice above <clears throat> the cold water inlet, the hot water outlet uh, for this system, the two lines coming in the front here are for the hydronic a loop that goes throughout the coach. You can see the 120 volt that comes in here. At the very front, there's a Hobbs meter. The Hobbs meter, whenever uh, the system is running, this is counting the hours. This system needs to be serviced yearly. So keep make note of that every year, uh, once a year, the filter in the front and the nozzle needs to be uh, serviced. There is also a three year and a five year service where additional parts would need to be serviced or replaced. Uh, just above the hydronic furnace, you'll notice a red water line that goes to the front of the coach. That's the hot water spigot. And this is the valve that turns that spigot on and off. So if we want to turn the hot water on to the front of the coach, we need to have this open. If we want it to be off, we can just close it. This you will want to keep closed and not have the hot water running to the front of the coach if the temperature is going to drop below freezing. So in the next compartment back is the same tray that we saw on the other side. It opens this way or uh, to the passenger side. We can access the inverter in the same way. You can see the inverter between the frame rails there. The next compartment up is the battery tray compartment. These are your house batteries. Uh, the house batteries uh, give power inside to all your functions for lighting and the other 12 volt appliances. To unlock and open the tray, just pull these pins and we can slide the tray out. We can service the batteries here. Uh, just refer to your owner's manual uh, for servicing lead acid batteries. Obviously these can be removed and fluid can be checked. The battery tray compartment should be cleaned. In the event that you don't have power coming from the batteries into the coach. If you look over on the side here, there's two fuses. Those fuses need to be checked. In addition to the batteries, if the fuses need to be replaced, they are replaceable fuses. These covers can be taken off and those fuses can be replaced or changed. When we're done servicing this compartment, we just close and put our lock pins back in place. The other fuel door is a mirror image of the other side. It fills the same tank. Another marker light just below that. Just behind the front wheel on the driver's side is the, uh, another jack. You can see and make sure that that jack retracts uh, right through here. You see an exhaust pipe here, that's for the Onan generator. And the last compartment in the front is our um, cockpit fuses and chassis fuses. So Numar uh, has all the fuses for the cockpit right here and they're all labeled. So keyless entry, cargo locks, auxiliary battery, jack buzzer, uh, mirrors, uh, if any of these fuses blow or need to be replaced, the little LED light above that fuse will come on. So if I, if I remove that fuse and have the system on, that light, the LED light will come on. Or if the fuse blows, then I would need to replace that fuse. There are extra fuses in this compartment right here at the front. So I wanna make sure that I get the same fuse rating that this one was. This is a five amp 
So I want to make sure if I need to replace that to replace it with a 5 amp. Just below that are our chassis fuses. The fuses and relays behind here are labeled on the back side of this ABS plastic. If you flip that around, you can see in the cockpit area, especially if you don't see the label uh, for the device that might not be working, uh, check here. Um, these fuses and relays are all labeled here. So just above our fuse panels, you'll see a box labeled living room. That's a 120 volt connection for the floor heat. Just to the front of that, we have our battery cable connections and our LED strip light is controlled here uh, with the magnetic switch. Want to make sure that when we close this door that it, that it is completely closed uh, because we want to make sure that this uh, bulb seal for this compartment uh, doesn't have any moisture or water seal coming in. 